1968 to 2001, Fred Rogers spread messages of neighborly love and kindness through his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He broke barriers by changing children's television in the way that it represented different people and ideas and impacted the lives of many Americans, both children and adults. Fred Rogers was born on March 20, 1928 in Latrobe, Pennsylvania to James and Nancy Rogers. As a child, Fred was bullied often. He was shy and did not have many friends. Other children would chase him and call him names like Fat Freddy because he was slightly overweight. Adults told him to ignore them and pretend that he didn't care, but he did care. He cared about how he was treated, and this may have influenced how he cared so much for children when he became an adult. One important thing in his life was music. Playing the piano was the thing he did to express his emotions, even at age five. Roger's love of music continued throughout his entire life, as he later wrote many songs for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. In 1946, Fred Rogers started college. He went to Rollins College in Winter Park, Florida, where he met his future wife and pursued his love of music. After graduating, Rogers was planning on going to seminary to become a minister. But in 1951, during his senior year of college, there was a major turning point in his life. On a visit home to his parents' house, Fred saw that they had a television. Rogers saw some children's shows, but thought they were terrible. He did not like how they weren't educational. And right there, Fred Rogers decided he wanted to change that. And so I, I said to my parents, you know, I don't think I'll go to seminary right away. I think maybe I'll go into television. This is how Fred Rogers' lifelong career in children's television began. In an interview, he stated why he went into television. Rogers wanted to improve television for everyone, especially kids. It's not that he didn't like television itself, he just didn't always like what was in it, and he wanted to find a way to make it better. Rogers got his first job in television in 1951, doing programming at a company in Pittsburgh called WQED. Over the next 15 years, he had a few more jobs in television, in Pittsburgh as well as in Ontario. Then, in 1966, Fred and his wife Joanne, along with their two sons, moved back to Pittsburgh, where he started developing Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The show finally aired on television on February 19, 1968. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, usually five days a week for 30 minutes, started with Mr. Rogers coming inside through the front door of his television house, singing the theme song of the show, Won't You Be My Neighbor? After the song finished, he would tell viewers what they were going to talk or learn about that day. Then, he would take the viewers somewhere, like a factory or a restaurant, and they would learn how things work and what they did there. When they went back to Roger's house, he would review what they did again. Next, the viewers would be taken to the land of make-believe. Here, puppets such as Daniel Striped Tiger, X the Owl, and King Friday the 13th would appear and talk about similar things that were talked about in the neighborhood. At the end of the show, Mr. Rogers would sing the closing song and finish the episode by telling the viewers that he cares about them and then saying goodbye. Although the show was doing well, in 1969, President Richard M. Nixon wanted to cut funds for television programming and use those funds to help with the Vietnam War. Cutting funds would mean it would be harder to produce Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Fred Rogers testified before the United States Senate Subcommittee in Washington, D.C. to try to stop this from happening. He didn't beg and argue, but instead talked about what he did on his show and how it was so important for children. This is what I give. I give an expression of care every day to each child to help him realize that he is unique. I end the program by saying, you've made this day a special day by just your being you, and I like you just the way you are. I think it's wonderful. Looks like you just earned the $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> this was very important as it is what saved Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and many more television shows. 
In the show, Rogers covered many simple, silly topics like why you shouldn't fear going down the bathtub drain or why getting a haircut is not scary. But he also addressed world issues that were happening at the time, like nuclear war, racial inequality, and how people with disabilities weren't treated very well. This was a children's show, but Mr. Rogers thought that kids should understand what was happening in the world if the topic was talked about in ways that made sense to them. Fred Rogers represented many people and ideas on his show and broke barriers in children's television. One thing that he did to break barriers was address racial inequality. In one episode, he was sitting outside dipping his feet in a kiddie pool because it was a hot day. The neighborhood police officer, Officer Francois Clemens, who was African American, passed by, and Rogers invited him to come and dip his feet in the pool. Even though segregation wasn't the law anymore, it was still happening a lot, so many white people wouldn't want to swim in the same pools as colored people. So when Officer Clemens was asked to dip his feet in the pool with a white man, he was taken aback. He took the offer and the two talked. When he was going to get out, he realized that he didn't have a towel. Mr. Rogers said he could share his. For kids, this was something that they wouldn't usually see, but it impacted many. Mr. Rogers' neighborhood continued for 33 years, from 1968 to 2001. But through it all, Fred Rogers broke barriers and spread neighborly love and kindness. Fred Rogers impacted many people as well as television itself. He broke barriers in a lot of ways. One way was through the episode with him and Francois Clemens in the pool. Another way was the way Rogers simply showed kindness to everyone through Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, even the viewers. He brought people of all race and background on the show and treated each one of them equally. Viewers all over America, both children and adults, were greatly affected, and many have told stories about this. One person shared how through Mr. Rogers' slow speaking and pointing to objects, he learned more English after moving to America as a child. Another woman told how she was lonely and bullied as a child, and that whenever she watched the show, she felt like Mr. Rogers was the only one who really cared for her and accepted her. Mr. Rogers is remembered in a very positive way. He is remembered for his kindness and caring for each person he met and each person who watched the show. There has been a documentary as well as a movie about him and countless biographies of his life in books and online. He also lives on through the new animated show called Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. He will always be remembered for the work that he did in children's television and how he used his talents to show kindness, compassion, and love to all. Fred Rogers sadly passed away on February 27, 2003 from stomach cancer. In an interview about four years before that, he stated how he wanted to be remembered. I'd just like to be remembered for, for being a, a compassionate human being who happened to be fortunate enough to, to be born at a time when there was this fabulous thing called television that, that could allow me to use all the talents that I'd been given. For over 30 years, from 1968 to 2001, Fred Rogers spread messages of neighborly love and kindness through his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He broke barriers by changing children's television in the way that it represented different people and ideas and impacted the lives of many Americans, both children and adults. From his first job of programming at WQED to the final episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, the kindness and compassion that he showed to everyone was always there. Fred Rogers will always be remembered for breaking barriers in children's television using his talents to show love to all people and just being the wonderful neighbor he was. Mm -hmm.